Chapter 3 It took me a long while to stop screaming. Finally, I swallowed hard, choking back my cries. We all stared in shock. Small chunks of twisted metal and a few burning cinders were all that was left of our car. How? was all Dad managed to say. I... I... I don't believe it, I stammered. Thank goodness we were all out of the car, Mom cried. She gathered us up in a big hug. Thank goodness we're all okay. Luke and Clay still hadn't uttered a sound. They stood wide-eyed, staring at the spot where the car had stood. My car! Dad choked out in a horrified whisper. My car! How? How? We're safe, Mom murmured. We're all safe. What a terrifying explosion! I can't get the sound of it out of my ears. I... I've got to call the police, Dad sputtered. He began trotting to the gate, shaking his head, muttering to himself. How could the car just blow up like that, dear? Mom Max, hurrying after him. What would make it do that? How should I know? Dad snapped angrily. I... I don't get it. I really don't. And now, what are we going to do? He sounded really panicked. I didn't blame him. The explosion was really scary. And when I realized that we all could have been inside the car when it went off, I had cold chills down my back. Maybe there's a car rental place we can call, Mom suggested. Mom is like me, calm in any emergency. We followed Daddy as he went running up to the ticket booth at the entrance. A green monster stood in the booth. He had bulging yellow eyes and dark horns curled over his head. It was a really great costume. Welcome to Horrorland, he said in a gruff low voice. A loud stab of organ music rose up from inside the ticket booth. I am a Horrorland horror. All of the horrors and I hope you have a scary day. My car! Dad cried frantically. There was an explosion. I need a phone. I'm sorry, sir. No phones. The guy in the monster costume replied. Huh? Dad's face was bright red again. His forehead was drenched with sweat. But I need a phone. Right away. Dan said, and Dad insisted, glaring angrily at the green monster. My car exploded. We're stuck here. We'll take care of you, the horror replied, lowering the square voice nearer to a whisper. Yo, what? <laughs> Dad cried. We need a car. I need to get to a phone. Don't you understand? No phones, the monster repeated. But please, sir, allow us to take care of you. I promise we will take care of everything. Don't let this spoil your visit to Horrorland. Spoil my visit? Dad shrieked, his face growing even redder. But my car! Another loud stab of organ music made me jump. The creepy music made me feel as if I were actually in a horror movie. We will take care of you, I promise, the horror said. A strange smile crossed his face. His yellow eyes lit up. Please enjoy your stay, and do not worry about transportation. The other horrors and I will see that you are properly taken care of. But, but, Dad sputtered. The horror gestured toward the park. Please enter as our guests. Free admission. I apologize for your car, but please do not worry. I promise you will have no need to worry about your car. Dad turned back to us, sweat dripping from down from his forehead. I could see that he was really upset. I... I can't enjoy an amusement park now, he said. I can't believe this happened. I really can't. We've got to get to a car somehow, and... Oh, please, Dad, Luke cried. Please, can we go inside? He said he'll take care of it for us. Just for a little while? I told my brother in pleading. We have such a long drive, Mom told Dad. Let's go in for a short while. Let them blow off some steam. Dad thought about it, frowning hard. Okay, just for a little while, he agreed finally. The organ music grew louder as we stepped through the gate. Wow, look at this place, I cried. It really is like being in a horror movie. We were standing on a brown cobbled street. Strange dark cottages tilted up on both sides of the street. Tall trees along the street nearly blocked out all the sunlight. The air carried a chill. Low howls, like wolf howls, floated out from the cottages. Cool! Luke declared. A sign proclaimed, Welcome to Werewolf Village. Do not feed the werewolves, if you can help it. The frightening howls grew louder. 
Luke and I laughed at the sign. I saw a green monster, one of the horrors, staring out at us through the dark window in the cottage across the narrow street. Another horror walked past carrying a very real looking human head. He grasped it by his long blonde hair and bounced it up and down, sort of like a yo-yo, as he walked. Cool, Luke proclaimed again. It seemed to be his word of the day. We walked along the cobble street. The sound of our footing sneakers echoed off the cottage walls. Oh! We all let out cries of surprise as a long, low, gray wolf ran in front of us. It disappeared around the side of the cottage before we really got a chance to get a good look at it. Was that a real wolf? Clay asked, his voice shaking. Of course not, I told him. It was probably a dog, or else it was mechanical. Well, they certainly keep this park clean, Mom said, trying to sound cheerful. There isn't a piece of trash or dirt anywhere. Of course, it isn't very crowded. Dad lingered behind. I... I've got to find a phone, he said frequently. I can't enjoy this until I know we have a way to get home. But dear, Mom started. There's got to be a phone somewhere, Dad interrupted. Go on without me. No, I'll come with you, Mom said. You're in such a frantic state. You'll need me to make the calls for you. The kids will have a better time without us hanging around anyway. Leave them? Dad cried. You mean let them go on their own? Of course, Mom said, hurrying back to him. They'll be perfectly fine. This looks like a very nice place. What could happen? What could happen? With those words, Mom and Dad rushed out to find a phone. Meet back here, Mom called to us. Luke, Clay, and I were suddenly on our own. I turned to watch Mom and Dad hurry away. I turned back in time to see a gray wolf edging out from behind the cottage. It lowered its head and let out a rumbling warning growl. All three of us froze as we realized its hungry red eyes were locked on us. Chapter 4, next time, peeps.